Hi, welcome to Velvet Games. Today we're going to be taking a break from our normal D&D content and showing you, well, more like telling you, how we make our custom magic items. I'm Jason. I'm George. And this is Velvet Games. So let's talk about some of the fun magic items we made in our multitude of campaigns. <laughs> I know you have like a ton of them, and I do too. Yep. So let we'll just bounce off each other. You start with one, and I'll say one, and you say one. So go ahead and start us off. Um. So most of my custom magical items are generally legendary items. Sure. So that way I can pretty much put whatever effects and whatnot that I want. Um, and then just try not to make it too OP. Um, but I still also make cursed items as well as cursed legendary items. Yeah. And also some very functional but joke legendary items as well. Okay. Um, so one of them that I actually have is a frying pan. Nice. Yeah. It it just does a ton of damage it already has a high bludgeoning damage plus a bunch of fire damage and then but it's literally a big frying pan nice so yeah that's one of my joke legendary items that i have but uh it's also a very functional weapon but whoever is the cook <laughs> of the crew <laughs> <laughs> anything you want to cook and or burn the best weapon in the game for it <laughs> nice i just imagine it like as a mario character yeah and just he just says mama mia bam exactly that would be the perfect uh weapon for mario <laughs> i should i should make a character called uh guy ferrari Guy Ferrari, and then have that as my weapon just like boom flavor town and then just hit everything with it <laughs> You would be killing everything. Um, exactly. That's what I want. Um, <laughs> so I guess I'll I'll share Daenerys, right? Mm -hmm. um, my favorite, it's ripped off from the Percy Jackson series, but it's my own kind of twist onto it. So it's a coin that flips into the air. Heads is a long sword and tails is a lance. And what it is, is it's a magical item depending on which one it lands on. So a long, it's a, a they both have spell casting involved, and it's a legendary item as well. Mm -hmm. It's a spell casting focus. If you land on to the lance side, your lightning spells uh, and everything does triple damage because it filters through the lance. Um, as well as if you get hit by lightning from it, and you can use it to kind of parry or block, it negates some of that damage. Mm -hmm. And then on the opposite end, where the sword it becomes this almost like another cloak of displacement of sorts, but you can, it's versatile. You can dual, dual wield or a double, what is it? Two handed, two handed, two -handed. there you go, words. Yeah, it's um, a long sword. It's a long sword, but uh, it also has lightning displacement, which it's a unique feature that casts this like lightning glow around you, making enemies hard to actually see you, as well as I believe it increases your speed too when it's a long sword too. Um, um probably yeah i had to double check it another time but then but that was one that's also one of my most like i love to make that item whether it has all those stats or not i just love the idea of like never knowing which item you're gonna get whether it's a sword or a lance and I mean, land just a flip of a coin and right then, uh all right this is what i got <laughs> exactly i remember bringing this like nice large challenge coin to each of our our uh sessions mm -hmm. and being like well let's figure out which side Bling. oh lance good thing i'm a wizard paladin lightning bolts <laughs> yes yeah and i killed like what three deities with yeah that? yeah so at this point this is one of my campaigns that was long running and at this point inside of the campaign they've already pretty much hit like demi no. status and they had uh multiple classes multiple subclasses um so yeah they were really really up there so at this point inside of the campaign pretty much the next step is uh fighting the strongest beings in the entire universe that's what i do so what um I do. yeah so it was pretty good i just show up and let them know let yeah them know. Destroyed lady everything of, lady of pain <laughs> Time Everything. Stop. Ain't nothing gonna stop me. Yeah. 
Goodness. Um, Except that? jail, apparently. Well, most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> Only for a little bit. Only for a little bit. Yeah, they just come back and blow it up. I gotta remember that character's name. I'm having a hard time. I don't remember. It. I don't know. It was something Greek. I don't know. All right, give me give us another magical item that you've made. Um, I guess we can go to more simple stuff. Um, for example, ring of protection. Okay. Sure. So, or even more specifically, cloak of protection. Mm. Um, both uh, for cloak of protection, it just adds one to your AC. Yeah, and it's an uncommon item. But ring of protection also adds plus one to all your saving throws, and it's a rare item. Sure. So I just made it simple. I made a greater ring of protection and a greater cloak of protection that just made it into a plus two. Yeah. And then I just doubled the rarity. So for an uncommon item, I made it into like a very rare. Mm -hmm. And for for the ring of protection, which was rare, I made it into a legendary item. Right. So, yeah, that's solid. That's easy to build on, and that's something maybe you guys can implement in your own campaigns too. You know, it's not too hard to build off of that. Yeah, uh, I took a similar idea from yours mm -hmm. and built my Gundam suit. <laughs> yes, that um, monstrosity. So you take it like a, a like think of it as a uh, piece of armor, right? But mm -hmm. it covers your whole body, and you just make piece by piece of it. So you have a helmet. And that has special features. Then you have the arms that have special features. You have the breastplate that has yeah. special features. So imagine power armor right. from game uh, for like Fallout. Sure. And then every single piece of armor, obviously inside of those games, have different effects. Right. Now imagine this in a D&D &D aspect that every single piece of armor has different magic uh enchantments on it yep so for it to go and basically do what you want it to do and so um and then you made a bunch of stuff primarily out of mithril for right. it to be light enough for you to actually be able to use it yeah so what i did was i garbage i enchanted the legs with brooms of flying <laughs> basically and then did i everything had a mithril and then an adamantine coating so it was easier to move around but it still gave me some defense Yes. Um, and then the breastplate was a simple breastplate. It was just straight metal. There was no enchantments onto it. Mm -hmm. And then the two arms had, um, I believe the two arms had some like spell storing into them. And I put, no, I was an artif I, I was an artificer and I fused the, the arms with special um, like spells. And I believe, yes. and they were like, um, like a fire bolt or something really simple. Yes. And then I made giant weapons to go along with it. So I made a giant mm -hmm. shield and a giant shotgun. Yep. And that had special slugs. I think slugs. what you primarily did with the arms was made them so that way when you had the armor on and you mm -hmm. wear the arms that you were stronger. So that way you could That's what use the enlarged weapons right. and the enlarged items. And That's whatnot. exactly what it was. So yeah. So. They're almost like a, a lesser version of Belt of Giant Strength, but in mm -hmm. the arms especially. So. Yes, it took Jason a long time to build oh, yeah. this, though, just primarily. Um, first of all, all these items didn't require attunement. It's anybody that hops into this suit of armor gets all of these effects. Yep. Um, so anything that requires attunement has its restrictions because every game you only are able to attune to a certain amount of magic items. Jason decided... I don't want any restrictions. <laughs> so uh, it takes more time. It's higher rarity, blah, 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 blah. Um, but what I wanted to worked. do, what I wanted to do was just to have one of the other PCs that was kind of a support character mm -hmm. just jump into the Gundam and then I would be my normal artificer self and kill everything with my guns. Because I also had <laughs> I had dual pistols. Yeah, and I had gunpowder in my campaign. Right. So. And I had the repeating shot as an artificer. I had different infusions that made my guns really good. And so um, my intent was like, okay, uh, the guy that we were playing with was kind of newer. So I was like, I'll just build him a Gundam suit. And then when I gave him, I started giving getting the idea for it, I started telling him about it. He's like, wait, you can make anything in this game? I was like, yeah, dude. Like yeah. that's D and D. <laughs> and he's like, "Can we make orbital missiles?" I'm like, "I've already done that." Yes, like, this is a new campaign, <laughs> and so on. And so it was a lot of fun building that with him too, because he was he had a lot of fun inspiring that. I think. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, let's get one more magical item. Let's see what else you got. Okay, choose. Okay. Cursed magical item mm. or 
legit magical item. Let's hear a cursed magic item. Let's see what okay. else. Okay, I had the glasses of charming. Okay. Yeah. So these this is another legendary item, but mm. cursed. So very dangerous, very good item. Sounds like my kind of item. Mm. Yes, it does. <laughs> so it pretty much let me let me actually just pull it up. I have it right here. Or so I thought. Anyway, um, it allowed you to pretty much be able to. Ha it had like ten charges. Allowed you to go and cast um, charm person with a really high DC. Sure. Uh, I think it was twenty. Nice. So you pretty much guaranteed to do it. And then there was also it would take two charges for you to do charm monster. Uh, had ten charges, so you can do a lot of damage with that. Hmm. But the primary curse of it is that you couldn't take them off. Everywhere you would walk around, anybody that would look into your glasses, more specific is for specifically talking about like NPCs and uh, civilians or pet whatever, um, would immediately like fall in love with you. Nice. And then do anything for you to the Good. point that it, they would just start fights just to get your attention. So literally anywhere you walk, any city you walk into is just utter chaos. <laughs> Because everybody that looks at you all of a sudden, yeah. So, but then I put a caveat in there was that you can put shades on them to mm. temporarily dis uh, disable the effects. But then you would use see bright light as dim light mm. and then dim light as just straight up darkness. darkness. Gotcha. So if let's say it was nighttime and you had these glasses on, you couldn't get them off. Well, Either you're blind or you just causing utter chaos everywhere around you. And then any actual players, they have to go off of a big DC yeah. um, save against you for that. That's pretty dope. So, yeah. That's funny. Um, Crazy item. So one cursed item that I've done. Mm -hmm. uh, I like. I know how people are at the beginning of most campaigns and they try and like find the magic item, use the magic item, so on. And like. I usually try to not do that. I try and make a character and I like pick up random items and I make them good along the way. Mm -hmm. um, but I, as a DM, I was like, how do I, how do I get people to think for themselves rather than just go off of the magic items guide? Right. Mm -hmm. So I put, I had a opening world and the first city that they were in had a magic shop. Cause why not? And so they're like, Oh, uh, what staffs do they? Because they're like, what swords do they have? What this that? And they have. I made sure they had no magic weapons besides three staffs. Okay, mm -hmm. one staff was a uh, a staff of lightning bolts or something like. And I just made it an outrageous price. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the other staff was uh, a normal staff of healing, mm -hmm. which most people aren't gonna like go about. And it wasn't like a huge price. And then he's like, eh, the third staff. I don't know what it is but it has magical power i'm not sure what it does but i've never touched it and that's what the shopkeeper would tell him hmm. and so he's like hmm how much for it and he goes you want that staff and he's like uh a thousand and at the time the players had a thousand gold and that would cost the player all of his gold and the guys were like no don't do it we have other plans we're gonna make money and they were over here like setting up businesses and doing this whole <laughs> trade thing. And I was like, that's cool. Um, but this guy was like, no, I'm going to be powerful. I want the staff. I, I don't care if it's cursed. Okay. <laughs> so he took the staff. Oh, no. And then the first fight they got into was a bunch of giant spiders. That's usually my niche. I like setting people against giant spiders. I feel like it's a good starting enemy. It is a pretty good enemy. And so he's like, okay, I'm going to pull out the magical staff. I'm like, cool. And I'm going to attack him with it. What 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 happens? I was like, how do you attack him with it? Uh, I'm going to hit him with it. Or I'm going to try. No, I'm going to try and channel my magic through it and try and hit him with the magic blast. Okay. Roll to hit. Add your spell DC. He hit it. Cool. Uh, subtract 10 HP. Or roll your damage. Sorry. He's like, <laughs> he's like, okay, I got a 10. Cool. Subtract 10 HP from yours, and the spider just gained 10 HP. Oh. So he had this magical staff, and for the life of me, I don't know why he couldn't get it. But he's like, it's just I, I, I didn't, I didn't do it right or something. Like he, every time he would go into battle and he would try this staff and give, <laughs> give the monsters more HP. 
<laughs> and I'm like, dude, it's cursed. And all these party members were like, dude, it's cursed. Like, it's not going to work. Like, just get rid of it. Just destroy it or something. He's like, I can't destroy it. I'm attuned to it. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. And so he actually became the party's healer. Oh, by, that's hilarious. By giving people the staff and, like, hitting people with the staff and draining his own life. Yeah, Which the, is a good the twist. cursed staff of reverse life stealing. <laughs> yeah. I called it the life sapping staff. Nice. Because it take your life and gives it to other people. So even your enemies. But I don't know. I don't know why that guy. I mean, I even gave him an out where there's um, uh, like a magic EMP mm-hmm. where somebody was like, I'm going to blow up all. And this is bad, towards the end of the campaign. I'm like, he's, I'm going to blow up the whole, all the magic in all the world. If I can't have it, nobody can. And it was like the gnome artificer that was just like pissed off. And so I was, I was giving him an out. I was like, you could sacrifice your staff of life sapping and throw it into the grenade, causing a distortion. And he goes, no, I'm going to fight the gnome. I'm like, <laughs> okay, bud. It's like, Whatever, no, bud. I, I'm keeping the staff. If you guys, if you, and that's. That, but I thought that was a fun twist to a curse item because it can, like he did make it help his his friends, but it mm-hmm. definitely helps his enemies. Oh, yeah. So, and people try and find, like I found, what was that? It was a sword that overtook my inhibition, like overtook my body. Yes. So I it gave you a sentient cursed sword. Uh, yeah. It wasn't a sword. I think it was a rod. It was something like that. Yeah. yeah that It had a bunch of magic uh, abilities and whatnot. Was that a custom were, thing, or I think it was some? It, it was custom. It was custom. It was yeah. very much custom. I made that item. I just don't remember what I called it. No, I don't remember either. Um, but yes, you knew that it was cursed. Yeah. But you didn't know what effect it would have on you. Right. So you kept on using it. I kept on having you roll saving throws, and you just kept on passing every single time. Right. I had it at a pretty low DC because I wanted you to be comfortable using it. Right. Then you were in the middle of the city. And you use the rod to go and cast one of the many spells and many charges that this rod had for him to use it on. I think it was like a merchant or something. Yeah. And he failed his his DC. Right. Finally. He then I told I went and pulled everybody else out of the room, told Jason, all right, you have been possessed and you are now in a murderous rage. I want you to go and fight everything and kill everything in your path with as the best way that you possibly can so i'm the worst person to do that exactly he yeah he went and killed so many guards so many people it took like the city's like personal military to go and take him down because he was just destroying everything i think even the other players tried to fight you and failed. Yep, I I'm inca- pretty sure. I incapacitated two of them, and the yeah. other one ran away. Yes. And I was just like, all right, whatever. Exactly. And then finally they took you down after some time and threw you into jail. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. Was, that was my that ranger was... too, right? My ranger that got Yes, that? it yeah. was your ranger. Yeah. Um, Definitely it was a very advantageous item. Right. But I was. it had that like. I don't know how to explain it. You know, like stink like hepatitis C that it hits you later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know all about hepatitis C. Sure. Yeah. It had like that that effect that it will eventually get you, and then you're you're messed up. Yeah. Um. From what I remember, it like released a demon out of it or yeah, something. And we fought that it. You guys yeah. had to fight. Exactly. Um. And then it made the rod back to like normal, allowing you to still use the rod, but it didn't have any of the negative effects, but right. it was like weaker or something. Yeah, it was something. But so, yeah. Um, but yeah, those are the magic items that we've used in our campaign. Hope this guy inspires you guys to maybe make your own magical items and include them in your campaigns. Or hey, if you want to, just copy and paste ours. We don't mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, we appreciate you guys watching and hope you guys enjoy this content. If you have some magic items that you want to talk about, Go ahead and leave in the comments, and we'd love to hear about it. Have a great day. Howdy, y'all. Thank you for watching this video today. It'd be mighty kind if you would uh, like, comment, and subscribe to this video. And if you can even uh, ring that bell. yeah, oh, That'd be awesome. And if you uh, want to be kind and support us in uh, doing this here endeavor, you can always hit up our Patreon, where we got plenty of rewards for you fellers. 
And uh, you can also visit the Discord to hang out with us and many other mighty fine partners. Now, uh, we gotta get going, so we'll see y'all later. But y'all come back now, you hear? <laughs>